Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the SEO Video Show. Today's topic, we'll be talking about SEO ranking factors and enterprise SEO. Today's sponsor is hrefs.com slash AWT. We see Andrew testing the live chat. What's up, Andrew? Hey, Paul. All, all right. Deanna, hello. All right, guys, I know people are still just coming in. Don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat. Stefan, happy Friday. Again, today's topic, so we'll be talking about local SEO ranking factors and enterprise SEO. Don't forget, if every time you see the HRS logo pop up, keep count and send me how many times you see it for some free swag from HRS. TGIF, what's up, everyone? We have everyone trickling in. Goose, hi guys. What's up, my man? If you're just tuning in, we're gonna be talking about local SEO ranking factors and enterprise SEO. Today's special guest, Andrew Shotman, CEO of localseoguide.com. Save you a few of you out there already. Don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat. Let me know how the weather is, where you're calling from or watching from. Hot, sunny, cold, raining, snowing. In today's topics, we'll be talking about local SEO ranking factors, enterprise SEO. Sean, happy Friday. <laughs> All right, it looks like. I'm not having any internet issues this week. I had to cut down the frame rate from 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second. That's what you get for getting cable. I didn't have this problem when I had fiber. Since the move, I'm stuck with cable. We got about four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Get your questions ready. We have an excellent guest today. Someone who I've been trying to get on for the past year, I believe, and we finally got reconnected. I 
again how many times you see this logo pop up just let me know send me an email drop a link in the guess in the comments i will reach out to you if you get it right um we can start it when the actual show starts i don't even know how many times i pressed it Do you do much uh, a local SEO? Let me know in the live chat. are talking about today uh, local SEO ranking factors enterprise SEO with our special guest Andrew Shotland of local SEO guide don't forget to visit today's sponsor hrefs.com slash awt you notice I got some new jams incorporated into the playlist I had to have my beat maker drop some new beats for us. Ethan, happy Friday, y'all. Ethan, you're from Denver. That's right, right? a few things but local is not something that I provide as a service interesting we have some enterprise clients we got some enterprise expertise as well Kobe what's up my man What type of clients do you have? Or do you do it on your own? Do you have clients? Do you do local, enterprise? Curious, let me know. All right guys, we got about 40 more seconds to go. Today we'll be talking about local SEO ranking factors, enterprise SEO. Today's sponsor, hrefs.com slash awt. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Ernesto, hey, my man. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started or self employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey. 
Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of the SEO Video Show, where SEOs are live and fun. My name is Paul Andre DeVera, aka Dre, and I cured SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest, and my guest today is the one and only CEO of Local SEO Guide, Andrew Shotland. Before we start get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Ethan, Ernesto, Kobe, Stefan, Sean, Andrew, Goose. What's up, everyone? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now, let's get on with the show. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Why did Tiger Woods start studying SEO? To get his number one ranking back. <laughs> Google search rollout algorithm updates. John Mueller explains. In general, we aim to make our algorithms as globally valid as possible. Not having to make variations for countries and languages makes them easier to test and maintain. That said, sometimes we have to pick a country or a language to focus on first. This allows our engineers to fine tune the algorithms. In those cases, we try to start with a language or a country that's most relevant to the algorithm. That can be English, but not always. When relevant, we mention this in our announcements as well. And then, once we find that the algorithm is working as expected, over time, it's usually expanded to other countries or languages. So in short, while we try to make everything as global as possible, the rollout of bigger changes can vary. I'm curious. If, if anyone was affected by negatively by the latest update, if so, what were some of the factors you've noticed that most likely contributed to it? Please put it in the live chat or comment below. A new episode of the Bill and Amen's show was just released this past week. If you're not familiar with the show, it's it's the the original one of the original SEO shows that started uh, on YouTube for the past decade. I mean, it was hosted by the late Bill Slavsky, and now Eamon is continuing the show with the crew. Okay, the link to the latest episode is in the description below. For every company, um, I've always been advocating for a brand, and for every company I work with, I'm always like, hey, you know, let's try and work on your brand searches. Let's check out this latest video by Chris Penn. Your SEO strategy is about being found, yes, but more importantly, you need to have two things working for you in parallel. One, you need a brand, a strong one, as strong as you can make it. If people remember who you are, they can Google for you. They have no idea who you are, they're not gonna Google for you. And the second thing you need is a community. You need a, an audience of people that you engage with, that you have conversations with, that you um, interact with, so that when there are things like algorithm changes in search engines, you're not as effective because you have this community, you have this base of people who are making word of mouth referrals, who are telling other people about you, who are posting reviews, uh, who are sharing and having conversations on social media and recommending you. When the CEO says, draw me up a short list of vendors that do X, you can say, Here's my number one recommendation. That's how you use community. Community is a reinforcing mechanism for search, right? Community is a reinforcing mechanism for brand because if your brand is strong, then your community can help reinforce it and make it even stronger, right? That brand, that, that community builds that brand. For every company I work with, I aim to like get their organic brand searches higher than their non-brand searches. I mean, okay. So now how can you increase uh, rich results like in the SERPs? Our friends over at Schema App give us a quick tip. Let's check it out. At the end of the day, it's all about your content. Um, and if you don't have content that, then you're not gonna have rich results or you're not gonna be eligible for those rich results. And just because it's there, right, because you're just eligible. So, I mean, you have to think about what we think about from our content perspective, especially on like our target pages where we're focused on like conversions, is how can we add elements to the page um, that will make us eligible for rich results. So FAQ, so that's a huge one, um, really popular. So we have FAQs on all of our health news articles. We have FAQs throughout different service lines and on our physician pages. So our FAQs, far and away um, are our most successful um, rich result type. 
Um, we're seeing a ton of traffic from those. We can see in the data that the pages that have FAQs far outperform um, the ones that don't. So we're looking at ways that we can expand those FAQs. And then the side benefit of that is then you're adding relevant keywords to your page. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, you're, um, you're becoming eligible for rich results and adding more keywords. All right, there have been studies where adding keywords in schema, uh, like schema and the backend code has been helped with the rankings. You can test it yourself. Okay, speaking of testing, on the latest SEO Fight Club, the, the crew shares their most important but most commonly overlooked ranking factor. Let's check it out. Hey, my opinion, factor diversity. I think SEOs get into a mode where they tune for the same eight things and that's all they do. And then they can't possibly imagine other lovers to pull to keep a, a web page moving up. So I think factor diversity is where people usually get stuck. What do you think, Lee? I'm going with keyword density. People are scared to death of putting the keyword on the page or under the page or anywhere near the freaking page. So it's the easiest to implement and it's the one that moves things, you know, really, really quickly. Do you know what ranking factors we'll be learning about today? Local ranking factors. Okay, this brings me to my favorite part of the show, but be sure uh, be sure to ask questions and I will address them in the order that they were received. Before we get started, let's, here's a word from our sponsor. Are you sick of your competitors outranking you in the search results? Your solution is Ahrefs Webmaster Tools and it's free 99. This isn't one of your 14 day free trial offers. Instead, it's a super powerful tool that'll do a full website audit for you and keep working for you for free. It'll scan your site and prioritize precisely what you need to fix and improve for your search results. Visit hrefs.com webmaster dash tools for this free tool. Find the link below and by checking our sponsors, you support this show. Now let's introduce our guest. Andrew has over 20 years of experience on the internet. He was a founding member of NBC's internet group and former GM of NBC.com. He's helped start Insider Pages, a pioneering local search engine, which City Search acquired in 2006. He's a regular, regular computer in search engine land. He is the co-founder of BayAreaSearch.org, the Bay Area search engine for marketing professionals. Please welcome the CEO of Local SEO Guide, Andrew Scottish. <laughs> Andrew, my man, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dre. That was quite an intro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Everyone give a Andrew a warm welcome. All right. All right. All right. So every, the first thing I ask all my SEO professionals that come on board in one minute or less, how does Andrew get ranking on page one of Google? Oh, that's easy. Um, so you start a... Uh, you basically create a TV show called SEO. Um, you have it star one of the most famous um, actors you can find, um, let's say Tom Cruise, or actually, um, you know, Larry David or whoever else you like. Um, Stephanie Sue, actually, if you saw everything everywhere all at once, she was awesome in it. Um, and uh, you get it on HBO, and I guarantee you within about a month or so, you'll be number one in Google for the word SEO, which is probably one of the more competitive keywords. And there you go. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's let's go ahead and rewind this a little bit. Let's rewind this. All right, take us way back, way back into when did Andrew first get into SEO? I actually got into SEO um, without even knowing it. Uh, I was doing some consulting for a site called iFilm in like 2001, maybe, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they redesigned their website and when they did it, they lost all of their traffic. And I had no idea at the time that that was an SEO problem because um, mm -hmm. Google was pretty nascent at the time. Um, but when I really got into it was in about 2003 at, in actually at Insider Pages. So we were a startup that was kind of like an early version of Yelp mm -hmm. and we had like no traffic. And one of our investors said, hey, why don't you 
why don't you just try this thing I've heard called SEO? And I was like, what are you talking about? I don't even know what that is. And he said, oh, I don't even really know much about it, but you know, I heard it's great. And so I asked a friend and I found a friend of a friend of a friend who was doing some SEO consulting. I hired that guy for about, I think, $5,000. And mm -hmm. he told us things like update your title tags. Uh -huh. And we had a basically a local direct national local directory site. So we updated our title tags and within like a week, we went from zero to like a million users or something crazy. And so we kind of got the SEO religion and we, we just kept trying more and more things. And I think it's, I don't think I'm like exaggerating when I say at the time, we were probably one of the fastest growing websites in the internet in the world, uh, because we were being so aggressive with SEO. We had, let's say 20 million business listings. We were getting a ton of reviews and a lot of links and we were just cranking. In fact, we became the first uh, review partner for Google Maps at the time because they were like, whoa, you guys are growing quickly. And that enabled us to raise a bunch of money from Sequoia Capital and SoftBank. Um, we thought we were going to be billionaires. Uh, that enabled us to hire a bunch of people like the head of marketing who decided our site looked like crap and wanted to redesign our site. We redesigned our site and I didn't know what I didn't know. And we introduced a technical SEO problem uh, when we launched it and we lost all of our traffic overnight. Uh, oh, and it's a problem I could fix in about 30 seconds now, but mm -hmm. at the time I had no idea what I was doing. And, uh, uh, the guy I had hired to help us disappeared because he probably had a thousand clients at the time. Mm -hmm. And most of them weren't causing him problems like we might be. And, um, so anyhow, I ended up losing my job. Uh, we ended up selling the company to city search and I ended up getting fired basically when that sale happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I happened to be having uh, drinks with the head of the LA Times at the time, the day I lost my job. And I, he said he was all excited because he got approval to redesign his website. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, what are you doing about SEO? And he's like, what are you talking about? And so mm -hmm. I said, well, listen to what, happened to me, what happened to me today. And the guy freaked out. And he's like, hey, can I hire you to do some consulting for mm -hmm. me? And I was like, sure, I don't have any, anything else better to do. And next thing you know, I'm an SEO consultant. And that was uh, 16 years ago. Love that. So that, was that the, the birth of the local SEO guide? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it wasn't called that for the first six months. Like I didn't have a website or anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, people used to say, how can you do SEO without a website? And I was like, oh, well, you know, really good SEOs don't need a website. Like who cares? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so then when I was, okay, I need a website so people can find me. Um, I just came up with local SEO guide. And the rest is history. Love it. Okay, so when you were first, you know, let's, let's take it back a little bit when you got that, you know, you were let go and you got this new job. So, I mean, what were you, uh, how did you actually learn it? Was it from this con this other contractor that you actually hired that said change meta titles? I mean, what were you doing to like learn SEO at the time? Yeah, so I was scouring the internet for people who were smarter than me about it. And so there were, there were a bunch of forums where people were exchanging information. There were a couple of hardcore bloggers who were writing stuff that was kind of blowing my mind. Uh, and so I was, I was getting very active on those forums and trying to like get as much information. And then I was basically learning by doing, you know, I set up my own site and figured it out that way. Um, I, I basically found other people who were smarter than me and would, uh, whenever I would get a client, you know, I'd be totally transparent with them. I'm like, Hey, I'm learning, but I know a lot of things. And then I would, if, for things I didn't know, I'd find someone who's like really good at technical SEO, let's say, or really amazing at rendering or whatever. Right. And mm -hmm. just pay them a bit, say, Hey, can you teach me how to do this? And, you know, within pretty quickly, I figured out that SEO would, while it has like, um, an infinite amount of detail, it really boils down to once you kind of see the matrix, it, it boils down to like a few core concepts. And you can use that framework to kind of diagnose almost any problem. Love it. Learn by doing, guys. And if you don't know it, just hire someone and learn from them. Okay, guys, I want to go uh, and take, take us to the journey of the, the birth of um, BASE, uh, the various search uh, group that you've actually co-founded. Uh, it's something where I actually met you uh, for the first time. It was maybe like maybe three or four years ago when you know, it was right before COVID and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I, I just found out about it around that time. And then we had to stop because we couldn't do it, meet up in person anymore, uh, which was quite sure. a bummer. But, you know, I saw that recent one just came out. Uh, I didn't, wasn't able to go to that one. But, you know, I'm like, what's, take, take us off. Why was it founded? What is it all about? And when is the next one coming up? Sure. So uh, uh, an SEO by the name of Matt Storms, who used to be over at TripAdvisor, 
um, had a kind of mastermind meeting at TripAdvisor one day and invited me. And it was basically about 10 SEOs sitting around just kind of swapping stories. Mm -hmm. And someone gave a presentation. Um, a really smart guy named Philly Weiss or Weiss or whatever you say his name. Um, he's at the, I think they're called SEO Brothers or something. Mm -hmm. um, he's an ex-Googler. And it was great. And then we were like, hey, that was really fun. Let's let's do it again. And so we somehow we ended up at, I want to say at Square maybe the next time. And instead of 10 people, there were now 20 people. And, um, and then we we're like, that was cool. Let's do it again. And then we did it again. I can't remember, but it kept getting bigger. Mm -hmm. And then I called up a couple of the people who were there um, and said, you know, this is really cool. Um, why isn't there an official group that does this as a thing? Um, we're like, we're the center of the internet. You know, like we think we are at least in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. And we're the one place in the country I know that doesn't have you know, like an SEO or SEM group, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like um, uh, DFW SEM or PDX SEM or anything like that. And I was like, we should have a group. Right. And so we just created this thing called Bay Area Search. We recruited a few people to be on the board and we just started having events. And our model was we just wanted to have free events at company headquarters. And so yeah. we did one at Yelp. We did one at LinkedIn. Um, we did one at um, God, what are we, Credit Karma, Bold, um, just all over the mm -hmm. place. Um, and uh, uh, and they started getting big. We had one at Macy's. I think we had like 100 people. We had. Um, uh, Gary from Google come and speak. And the model was essentially, let's have a presentation or a panel, but it really was about networking and getting mm -hmm. you know more people in the industry and helping people. Uh, and it was starting to go great. And then COVID happened and it kind of um, dissipated a bit. So now we're, we're slowly but surely having meetups again. We've had two so far. Mm -hmm. They're really just glorified reasons to get together at a bar and have a couple beers. Um, I think we had maybe 20 people at the last one. Uh, we're just, matter of fact, about uh, an hour before this show, mm -hmm. we just started having a Slack call, like, when are we doing the next one? I think we'll do one in July. Mm -hmm. And I think where we're building up to is sometime next year, we'll start having in-person events that are more significant. But for now, it's going to be mostly, hey, who wants to meet up in a mm -hmm. cool place in San Francisco, just to have a couple of drinks. Love that, guys. And if you guys are in the barrier, be sure to check it out because it's a place where, you know, when you have a couple of drinks, whether it's at a headquarters or at a bar, the secrets come out. So this is where, like, a lot of things that you don't hear talk about. And, hey, you know what you're doing and what's working? It's really, really um, openly shared in the group and, and something that I've appreciated when attending these 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 events, which was, was really, really awesome. Okay. So when you go to um, – oh, did you have – did you want to say something or – Well, I was just saying that's one of the things I love about this yeah. industry is – there are very few people I've met who are like, that's my secret. I'm not going to tell you how I do these things. <laughs> like, I think everyone is eager to share learning yeah. and because it's always kind of developing. And mm -hmm. there's only so much knowledge any one person can keep in their head or in their like spreadsheets. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I've, I'm a big believer in like, I will, I will tell you everything I can possibly tell you how we do this stuff. Cause mm -hmm. most of the time, most people don't want to do it themselves anyhow. Right. Mm -hmm. Love it, which takes us to our next part of our segment here, and which is um, local SEO ranking factors in here in 2022. I mean, this is something that I've, I've seen even online. You talk about local SEO ranking factors, how reverse engineering uh, Google's local um, local ranking, you know, algorithm. And um, what are some things that you can like, like as things that you're seeing here in 2022 that's working for, you know, you and your clients and that can help others that's ranking locally? Sure. And I should be clear, even though our name's local SEO guide, I'd say mm -hmm. half of our business has zero to do with local. Um, mm -hmm. We do a ton of local, but we do just as much non-local work. Mm -hmm. um, but we really um, we really are interested in multi-location SEO for sure and, and trying to uncover all the, the little secrets you can figure out of how to move the needle at mm -hmm. scale. Uh, so for several years, we did a huge study uh, with the University of California Department of Statistical Consulting um, mm -hmm. to basically try to reverse engineer the algorithm, or at least come up with like a significant correlation study of, you know, millions of data points. And, and what that typically showed was shocker. Um, the same things typically that work for non-local SEO work mm -hmm. for SEO, meaning content and links. Mm -hmm. There are, um, there are some peculiarities to local SEO, particularly your location which is something you really can't do much about unless you're really aggressive. 
uh, and and then um, your 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 business category, uh, certain things you can do on your Google business profiles, those kinds of things. But for the most part, what you really need is a um, a basic Google business profile set up. Mm -hmm. So do all the right things there. Uh, and then um, you really need to focus on your location pages on your site and your site being as um, perfectly SEO'd as possible. Let's put it that way. Love it. So what is your definition of perfectly SEO'd? Well, there's no such thing, <laughs> of course. There's all the things we want you to do, but you'll uh -huh. never get to, right? But uh, so think of it this way. You need a, we've done a lot of testing on um, Google business profile landing pages. Mm -hmm. So as an example, uh, you need to make sure that your Google business profile is linked to the most relevant landing page on your site for whatever you're trying to rank for. So oftentimes we'll see clients linking directly to their homepage, which may make mm -hmm. sense in some cases, but when you're a multi-location brand, you probably need location pages. Uh, and so then you need those location pages to be structured in a way to target queries. So as an example, we did a huge, um, big data intelligence uh, study or basically an audit uh, for a very big retailer. Mm -hmm. uh, and their, the goal there was how do they make a billion dollars in new revenue through local search? Okay. And so what we determined was we looked at uh, location retailers that were ranking well for specific queries across the country in about 5,000 markets. And we looked at what are the commonalities among those landing pages that, are, that stand out and surprise, one of the things that stood out was if you want to rank, let's say for um, video game retailer near me or video game store near me, mm -hmm. uh, maybe use the word video game on your location page and maybe link to your video game location or your video game category page from your location page. So um, there are a lot of these basic things that most multi-location sites don't do. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone has their name, address and phone number on a location page or for the most mm -hmm. part they do. but. Uh, they neglect to add relevant content to those landing pages, like images or like categories that people search for regularly. Uh, uh, sometimes video can make a difference. And so you have to study what's working at scale across all these search results. And um, you know, intent is a big, a big uh, piece of lingo that people use in the SEO a lot. Mm -hmm. You have to look at what Google thinks the intent of these searches are and kind of match the intent. Um, and it's kind of like a, it's kind of your classic who cares SEO answer because it's so vague, but it really is case by case specific. Yeah. Uh, so, but um, anyhow, so that's kind of how we, we look at it. Another tip is if you have a, let's call it a search only store locator, meaning I go to store locator page on your site oh, and yeah, a yeah. search box. And we've done studies that show uh, if you have a, what we'll call an HTML, HTML directory store locator, meaning state city location links, you're going to rank for 2x more keywords at least than one that's search only because now you have a crawlable path with internal links. Mm. So if you manage a site with multiple locations, even if it's like two, um, uh, I would say a high priority thing would be to create a state city directory that Google can crawl through to, you know, versus having a search only one. Love that tip there. Okay, so we have a first question from Stefan, which he did uh, give some humor. I mean, he asked, hi, Andrew, what are some of the best tips for businesses with multiple locations? Like, uh, uh, so I think that that one I just gave, yeah. th there's actually two, right? So uh, uh, one, make sure you have a clickable directory to get to the locations from your homepage and from every page on the site. Two, uh, I would start to make sure that your services if you have, let's say a lot of sites have like a national service page mm -hmm. and then a location page. And so uh, you want to make sure that your location pages link in the content, not just in the nav, link in the content to your services page. Um, you'll also want to do some research to see if there's justification for creating a local service page. So let's just say you're a tire shop mm -hmm. and you do brake repair. You want to kind of come up with a good theory as to why it might make sense to have a location plus brake repair page versus a national brake repair page. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works, but because there's a lot of search intent there, but sometimes it doesn't because if you have, let's say a thousand locations, you're suddenly creating a thousand new pages and you can cause crawl bloat and, and yeah. let's call it page rank dilution or whatever you want to call <laughs> that. Um, 
Uh, let's see other stuff you can do. This is my favorite trick and, and, uh, Dre, I'll send you a link to this. If, okay. if you don't have it, um, I wrote an article for search engine journal about a year or two ago. Uh, if you're doing Google ads, um, and you have your, uh, Google business pages hooked up to your merchant center, mm -hmm. uh, they give you a lot of data about what are the most popular, um, uh, items that get impressions and clicks that are connected to your Google business profiles. So as an example, we have a client that had the PlayStation five, uh, for sale when that was hot. And you could see in the merchant center that most people were clicking on PlayStation five when it was close attached to their Google business profiles. And so that's a signal that maybe on your location pages, add a link to the PlayStation five page on your location pages. Mm -hmm. And you'll, when people get in there, they're much more likely to convert and click through versus just bounce out because they just wanted the phone number or something. Excellent. Love it. Love it. Thank you for that. Okay. So I wanted to go into now the opposite of local SEO, more of like the enterprise SEO. Cause you said, yeah, you are doing other, you do SEO clients. You have, I mean, you have enterprise clients and I'm curious, like, so what's the shift here? I mean, I know you cut you first, you did mention like, you know, it's pretty much the same thing, but what, what are some tactics that you are, that you see working with enterprise SEO clients? Well, once you get the the technical issues out of the way, which um, with any site of any complexity, getting the technical issues out of the way is always kind of a pain because uh, it just requires you to get developers involved and get in the prioritization queue and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so obviously it'd be working on that foundation first, making sure that Google is able to crawl, render and index your content and making sure that it's focused on the content you want to show up in Google. Uh, that's usually the first step. And then just like local, it, it comes down to a content link strategy. You know, what is your, what is your strategy to get content in front of potential customers? And so essentially that's doing a lot of research planning, working with the client in our case, or in house, if, you know, working with your marketing team or, or your customer success team, uh, understanding what are the pain points for prospects that are coming that you know coming through the door through other channels and kind of echoing that on the content on the site and then cranking it out and getting links and there is it's it's in a lot of ways it's really simple it's like okay mm -hmm. we need to publish 100 pieces of content on this topic and or these topics and then we need to get links but it's anything but simple in execution because it involves having a lot of different pieces of the puzzle in alignment and coming up with a way to con kind of rinse and repeat you know, reliably mm -hmm. and then pivot when you see changes. So like Google may do some update and suddenly um, the intent of the queries you're targeting has changed. Mm -hmm. We saw this a lot. Actually, we did a lot of work. Uh, we, were, we were the outside SEO company for Upwork for, for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we noticed one day that a lot of their rankings had changed uh, for queries like PHP programmer or near me or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and or graphic designer. And what we saw was that Google overnight had shifted the results for those from find a graphic designer on Upwork to local packs and um, job listings. So, oh, looking for, are you a graphic designer mm -hmm. looking for a job? Here's yeah. Indeed or Simply Hired. Yeah. And they did that across a huge number of categories. And that created a need to do a dramatic shift in strategy for a site like Upwork because that was where a huge amount of traffic had been coming and suddenly they went from number one to number six or something. And so, um, so being aware of these shifts in intent and then coming up with ways to adapt to it is a really big part of the enterprise SEO. Love that. Be aware guys. Um, I'm speaking of, of enterprise backlinks, I'm curious, like, what are you like kind of your sources for, you know, looking for backlinks for like, say your enterprise companies coming. Cause I mean, yeah, we're, are you looking for for that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's always a big, who, yeah. who the hell knows? How do you do yeah. that? Right. So we're always an advocate for scale. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you can do it, most companies can't do it or won't do it, yeah. but we'll always come in the door and say, okay, what are the assets you have that can lead to a scale program and, and in no particular order? Um, so if you're a, we've done a work with like a lot of local directory sites, like we've probably done SEO for every yellow pages site on the planet at one point mm -hmm. or another. And so a very common strategy there is like create some kind of reason for the, the local business to promote you on their site. Like yeah, Yelp has like, Hey, review us on Yelp type things. And those mm -hmm. kind of 
links oh, work really okay, well because okay. if you have if you have 10 million businesses there you can get some percentage of them to do that mm -hmm. um uh another really great strategy is to create a functionality for a website that exists on your site what i mean by that is if you look at grubhub um, a big part of their seo program is basically having an, a menu for a restaurant hosting a menu on grubhub.com that the restaurant links to for online ordering and so they have you know like thousands of restaurants linking them with the yep. anchor text online ordering to grubhub and that works pretty well uh, uh so those are the kind of scale type programs um we even um we even worked with a actually we didn't work with them i just did some kind of ad hoc consulting for bleacher report a million years ago uh that was a um, sports news site and they basically built an entire syndication platform to copy their content over to local media sites and then surprise every news article on let's say the new york daily news um that mentioned the new york yankees also linked to the bleacher reports new york yankee page and that enabled their seo to really scale up um, so those are like the best ways but most sites are not going to do that because it involves a lot of strategic prioritization yeah. right um mm -hmm. and so typically we'll do a content and links program where we're like okay what is what do we think are the key pages that can get links and that getting links might yield some benefit and let's focus on those and um and so for example right now we're doing a working with the national real estate website and we're essentially doing links to their city pages and okay. with the hope that that will um basically uh send authority to all their listings for that particular city and it's working pretty well you can pretty much see the page the city pages that are getting links are outperforming those that aren't love it for all those knowledge bombs there okay so one of the things i see with even with enterprise clients is like you and and, and since you have like your consulting and agency you, you have to sell it to them right you have to kind of like forecast what the the benefits of them uh for right. to get their business so there's something that you recently put out and i, I didn't have a chance to see it yet but i want to talk to you on here as on uh, seo forecasting right so uh, what yeah what is like you know, what are you doing what is can you explain like your process of what is SEO forecasting and what are you doing to create SEO forecasts? Yeah. So, you know, we occasionally we get clients who ask us, okay, how much am I going to get yeah. and how, how quickly is it going to happen? Yeah. Right. Um, everyone wants to know that. And historically we've kind of been like, um, you know, like here's some keyword data and, and, you know, search volume data and here's what your current data is and like, okay, 10%, right? Like it's, mm -hmm very hard to forecast this stuff in, in any degree of accuracy. And so what we were seeing was clients using their own internal forecasting methods, which were all useless. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in fact, I'd say um, at least 60% of the time when clients engage in forecasting, it's always because some other department like paid search is doing forecasting and they have to do the same thing. And everyone has made up numbers like, mm -hmm. The rigor is like not really there so we were kind of like okay how can we do it with some rigor um and so we started using a lot of fancy formulas to predict results like oh, okay if we put in five thousand dollars a month of content and you're at this level over the last three years of that kind of investment we've seen this kind of performance across a wide variety of sites and this is what sem rush let's say says or ahref says about your um your traffic right now. So let's apply some fancy formula to that. And that actually worked okay. Sometimes it was a scary how accurate it was, but it was way too flaky. Mm -hmm. So I have, we have a bunch of software developers on our team and I said, Hey, you guys are smart. Can you build us a forecasting model that we can use? And so we're using this, um, I'm, I'm totally forgetting the name of our forecasting model. It's some popular forecasting model. And essentially, um, we, uh, we just basically, we apply some, some formulas to it and we essentially go, okay, for a content program, these are the inputs and what's the output. And essentially what we showed was uh, based on, if you look at historical data and you use the historical data in the model, it actually predicts with pretty decent accuracy what the SEO performance should be if you do everything right. Mm -hmm. And so we built the, basically built a statistical model that you know, comes within a, it's never going to be accurate, but at least directionally it can give people an idea of what they should expect. And we mm -hmm. apply that model to 
okay, if you go after this topic or these pages, here's the historical traffic to them. And so based on the model, it should go like that. Mm -hmm. And that's how we use it. We use that to help make decisions. Most of the time, it's really just for us to show that we've done our homework. We net, we always put a big asterisk and say, this is just a, a model, but mm -hmm. we're, we want you to know we're thinking about these things and we'll revisit it as we go along to see how close we are to the model. Love it. So are you attaching any dollar amounts to it? So, cause I know that's a big question. Like if people would, cause you know, with SEO, there's an investment involved. Like, so what's like, you know, the return on, on investment, like on dollar wise, is that part of that the whole model or is it just kind of like what they optimize for? Well, if, if, if the client will give us conversion data and if we trust the conversion data, then we mm -hmm. can do that. I've got to say half the clients we work with either don't have reliable conversion data or we don't trust it. Got it. I can't tell you. It. I'm sure you've seen this too, Dre. Like every time you're like, oh, well, so I'm using the goal completions number in your Google Analytics. And they're like, oh, <laughs> someone set that up six years ago. We haven't looked at that in years. Right? Oh, I go through that every single time. All right. So I want yeah. to go into a little more of something that you've been really, really active on LinkedIn. I'm posting and posting like a bunch of tips. SEO tips that you shared out there. And I'm curious because I, you know, I've actually shared a bunch of them here on the show. Uh, they're, they're really oh, nice. great. They're really like w you know, one minute bite-sized SEO tips that are very, very valuable. I'm curious with your own analytics that you can see that you're able to see, like what are some of the top ones that had the most engagement and like that you've shared on there? Man, I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, speaking of people not tracking conversions or analytics, um, <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that. I think maybe, um, oh, actually I know, it's always my blooper ones. <laughs> I've been doing blooper <laughs> reels. Those, those always get the most engagement for sure. Um, so I've been doing these things now for about a year. Yeah. And um, as sure as you can imagine doing a, I mean, you are a, you're a machine, right? With these things. Um, sooner or later, you're like, how many different ways can I talk about SEO? Like, mm. I, and, and so I said to my team, like, can we just do some blooper reels? Those are more interesting than me telling you how to do a redirect, right? And um, so those those generally do pretty well. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. Like, what's gotten most? I'm a, I'm a really I'm a really poor, like I always say SEOs are the worst marketers, and I'm probably a good example. Like, I'm just not paying. I'm just doing those for fun, not really paying attention to like how they. Do. All right, all right, all right. So let's go into on the next, like, the one thing where I, every time I've, I'm, well, when I was putting together your reel for the show, you know, I, I, I I'm watching these videos, and one of the, the questions I'm that sorry. Every, every single person or interviewer has asks um, is, uh, you know, what is your uh, opinion on the future of search? I mean, you got one back in what was it 2007? You had I mean, there was one back in 2010. I mean, it's 2022 now. So, what is your opinion on the future of SEO and search? Uh, I am hugely optimistic about it as a as a like industry career niche, whatever you want. The opportunity there is like it feels infinite. Um, uh, and I think I was, um, I can't remember who I was talking to, maybe my wife this weekend or something. You know, there was this news about the, the this Google guy got fired or put on leave because he said his, um, the AI had become sentient, right? The, I don't know if you saw that, right? And mm -hmm. and so uh, so someone was talking about, oh my God, the, the machines are gonna take over. And I'm like, yeah. no, they're not. <laughs> like I can see just, Hello? It looks like we got disconnected. Right when he was about to tell the story. Can you guys hear me, guys? Uh, I want to make sure it's uh, we're still live here. Can anyone? Um, I see Nur, Nur Nasrat. You're from Bangladesh. It's 1.38 a.m. Okay, guys. Can you guys hear me? Anyone out there? Hello, anyone? <laughs> I, I wonder if, uh, I hope I'm still streaming here, but let me go ahead and go back. Okay, we, oh, you hear me. So we got disconnected with Andrew. Okay, all right, let's let's see. Let's wait for Andrew to get back. We're, we're coming close to the end here. I want to make sure, if you guys have any questions, if, if we can get him back on, 
get them ready because I'm going to go ahead and ask my last question, which I always ask all my as a professional to come on here. But for now, let's see if he comes back. And I know we, we, we saw the machines. Machines cut off, uh, cut off Andrew. Let's see here. He started talking about about them and they must have got upset. <laughs> All right, let, let's go ahead and let me go ahead and put some music on before and see if you can come back on. I'll wait for about you know a couple minutes to see. Hopefully we can get him back on. Let me go ahead and um, ping him on LinkedIn. And if you guys are not following him on LinkedIn, be sure to follow him on LinkedIn because he put out he puts out really, really good content on LinkedIn. So while we wait for him, let's go ahead and see if he's on LinkedIn right now. So hopefully you guys are finding this episode very helpful. Let me go ahead and Nico, where are you? Where are you from? I don't think I remember where you're you're calling from. Oh, okay. Oh, we have. Okay, Andrew's back. Let me. Um, I'm. Going... All right. Hey. All right, we're back. We're back. But you're on your phone this time. <laughs> That's which is so yeah. Cool. I don't know what happened. I have a feeling um, uh, Google heard me saying what I thought the future of SEO was and totally like killed my internet. Um, no, that's exactly what we were talking about in the live chat. We were, we were just like, you know, they, they, they probably just cut them off. All right. So I yeah. want to go, let's go ahead and go. I want you to go ahead and finish what you think the future is of SEO. And I'm going to go ahead and ask my last question um, right after you, you, you um, give us your opinion on uh, the future. So, so what I was pontificating about was that um, I think, um, so no matter what the future of search is, whether it's happening on a website or on your phone or in your like a chip in your brain, mm -hmm. there are always going to be um, uh, ways to exploit the system, flaws in the system. Yeah. Um, and they're always going to forget about exploiting flaws. There's always going to be a need for uh, people like us to help improve the results. Right. Mm -hmm. And and give feed the machine what it really wants. And so I think. Um, people who know how to do this and evolve as it evolves will have like an infinite amount of work for the rest of their lives. This is basically the way I'm thinking about this stuff. Love it. Okay. I didn't see any other questions come in from the live chat, but I want to go ahead and ask my last question before I let you go today. Um, if someone wanted to become an SEO professional, get into the SEO industry today, what would your advice be to them? Uh, so I think the, the, I, I can only speak to how I did it, which yeah. is essentially like learn by doing. So build yourself a website or find a friend, a, a small business nearby who has a website and offer to kind of use them as a guinea pig to see how, to, how it works. Um, seek out um, SEO companies maybe in your area and offer your services, like even as an intern or do a project. I can tell you right now, every SEO agency I know is bursting at the seams. We cannot keep up with the work. It's so the demand is so big. So if a smart person came to me and said, hey, man, I'm going to do X, I, I can give you 10 hours like to do something. I just want to learn how to do keyword research or something. Um, if I could figure out how to package that into a project for you that wasn't too burdensome, I would probably do it. So uh, I just say, like, treat it like you're looking for a job and you'll find one. Love it. Love it. Okay. And don't forget, if you're in the Bay Area, check out um, Bay Area Search Group and base. Go to bayareasearch.org to check that out to learn more. Uh, Andrew, can you hold on for just one quick second before I sign off? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right, guys. All right, guys. That concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And until next time, I will see you next week. Peace out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, get it started. No delay. Let's work. Wanna see you? Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't wanna miss a thing. Hope you learn something new. Cause the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Wanna see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera helping you step it up. No delay. Right now, time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!